Hello everyone and welcome to the Moe Gamer podcast. This is a special episode for the not E3 season of 2020 because uh, for the first time in I think it's 26 years we've not had an E3 this year. So in order to discuss the things that have been happening while we haven't been having an E3 which is quite a lot of stuff I'm joined by not one but two of my favorite people. So gentlemen if you would care to introduce yourselves yeah, so uh, hopefully you guys recognize me by now. This is Chris Kasky from MrGilderPixels.com. Hope everybody's having a good start of their summer. Marvelous. And Joe? Uh, yes, uh, my name is Joe, and I am the host of Airy Channel TV on Twitch. I'm a Twitch broadcaster. I've been doing this for seven years, showcasing very niche and anime games and all the wonderful stuff in between. Also, the former reporting manager for Operation Rainfall nice yeah joe's been on this podcast a few times in the past if you if you recall but uh yeah he, he, we figured it was time that he came back and had a chat with us and uh, all of the stuff that's been happening recently is a great opportunity to do that i think so i believe the last time we had joe on was the last e3 show oh was it yeah oh well there we go yeah i felt it was time to come back for an anniversary you know <laughs> All good with me. All good with me. Okay, so um, much like the the last time we did like a big bumper cropper news episode, um, we are following a slightly different format to usual this week. We're going to talk a little bit about what we've been playing recently, first of all, uh, and then just our main topic of the sh- of the show is going to be what's been going on. It's another the happenings episode. So let us begin with uh, what we've been up to lately. So who would like to share what they've been playing recently? I, I yield. I yield the floor to the special guest. Start Alrighty, as, go ahead. Start as strong, my friend. All right. I guess I'll go first then. Um, so lately, I've been doing a lot of uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Yeah, wow, lovely. what a what a wonderful game that is. Yes. Um, did you play? Did you play the original release on the Wii? No, I didn't have one. So this oh. is my this is my first opportunity to play Xenoblade. And, oh, uh, how wonderful! I I really wanted just to just see what I'd been missing out on. Because I played the second game and I fell in love with the second yeah, game, mm-hmm. and and also the the Torna the Gol- Golden Country DLC. So I had a really yeah. great time with that. I love the battle system. The open world is just breathtaking, man. The the environments, just looking at them, it's like wow. Yeah, I want to. Yeah. I want a vacation here. I want to live in this place. <laughs> yeah. You know, if I didn't have to live in fear of the mech on, this would be a great place to to get away from it all. I, I, think, I, I think it's the Machna Falls area is one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to in a video game. And it was beautiful on the original Wii version as well. So it's astonishing to think that they could do that on sort of the old tech. Yeah, I've watched people play it. I've watched Let's Plays. I've watched streams. I was like, man, I'm really missing out on a great JRPG here. And now I'm finally doing it. And it all the all the visual upgrades look, look spectacular. The characters are so yeah, expressive and... I get to dress Ricky in a pineapple outfit, <laughs> have a vacation during serious scenes. It's great. Um, I guess the question is, are you really feeling it? I am so <laughs> feeling it, and um, I really, I really hope we get more Xenoblade down the road. So I'm, I'm good with that. So other than that, I've been doing the um, the the Final Fantasy Five Four Job Fiesta. Are you guys familiar with that? Oh yes, I think I think you actually talked us through this last time that you uh, you were on the podcast. So I probably yeah. did, but it's been a it's, while. It's, so. You do it pretty much every year, don't you? Every year, except I failed last year. I didn't get oh. through it last year. This year, I did a Chaos Berserker Risk run, which for people who don't know, they're not familiar with the rules, it means four jobs are picked for you by a Twitter bot. And if you have Berserker Risk, you have a chance to get Berserker in, in one or more of your slots. So I got two Berserkers this year, and one Ranger, and one uh, Bard. So I got pretty unlucky... <laughs> but I managed to get through it anyway, so I was really happy about that. Um, Final Fantasy V is a wonderful game, and it's a great that's a great way to experience it. Usually, um, the charities for, um, I think it's Child's Play, I think it's, is that the Hospital chatter, Charity? Yes, I think so, yeah. So, um, yeah, they, they usually do it for Child's Play, but uh, this year they, they decided to do it too with uh, different Black Lives Matters charities like the Minnesota Freedom Fund and All right, uh, yeah. Color of Change. So um, I was going to drop, uh, you know, a few, well, a few, more than a few bucks on the charity once I finish. So, uh, yeah, it's it's for a good cause. And even if you're not doing it for charity, it's just a great way to experience that game. Yeah, talking to that charity, have you seen that itch bundle with like 1,500 games in it? I have. It's like, wow, what an incredible value, and what a yeah. 
amazing yeah, you... way to experience all these uh, <laughs> creations that all these indie devs have come up with yeah so if you, if you do want to make a donation that's a great way of doing it because i mean that will keep you in streaming content for several years i imagine <laughs> oh absolutely as if i didn't have enough time to do everything i wanted to do now but... indeed all right good stuff is that all you've been up to absolutely yeah cool you, you are you still playing fantasy star online too as well i am um and i don't know if i'm allowed to plug my uh my oh, alliance go ahead. i am go looking ahead. for people if you play on us ship 2 my my alliance is called star takers so if you're interested i need more able bodies to do urgent quests with and advanced good quests stuff. so we're good at stuff that point uh, we're both on ship one, unfortunately, so we can't help you. But uh, <laughs> hopefully someone listening will be able to give you a hand with that. Uh, that's just how it goes sometimes. Indeed, indeed. All right, Chris, what you been up to? Uh, well, let's see. I had the good fortune over the past uh, two or three weeks to have finally gotten copies of two games I was a Kickstarter backer for. Um, the first of which is uh, Lab Zero's Indivisible. Oh, yes. Yep. Which I had mentioned a couple times on here, specifically a couple weeks ago in our episode about unique RPG battle systems, when we talked yep. about um, kind of games that are based on or tributes to the Valkyrie profile style mm -hmm. of combat. Um, so, yeah, Indivisible is a really beautifully um, animated RPG um, from Lab Zero, which uh, people recognize today as the creators of Skullgirls. So, oh, yes. Love Skullgirls. Yeah, so they have a really unique uh, approach to making these kind of 2D games with very traditional hand-done uh, frame animation. Um, and their games are kind of instantly recognizable. Uh, Indivisible was kind of an effort to meld kind of this style that they made famous uh, with Skullgirls, but then they wanted to make uh, an RPG instead. So it kind it takes a battle sequence system similar to Valkyrie Profile, where each of your characters is mapped to a single button on the gamepad, and they stand in a diamond formation. And then when you press their relative button they attack and the idea is to almost have a fighting game style cadence to the combat where like one character can begin with an air juggle launch and then you bring your archer in to like shoot and do bonus damage while the enemy's in the air and you got a guy with a hammer who does a downward swing and you knock him out of the air and it's all about collecting these different characters that you meet along the way and then figuring out like unique combinations to make the battle sequences interesting uh, or more dynamic with the way you can combo their attacks together. Um, when you're not in combat, it's a really nice side-scroller with a little bit of light puzzle-solving elements and some exploration. Um, I'm getting a heavy um, like Metroid-style feel to some of the dungeons where it's clear that there's like areas and kind of doors I can't open yet, so there's going to be opportunity, I hope, to return to some of the early dungeons and do some exploring. Mm -hmm. But uh, loads of characters, lots of uh, unique design elements. Um, one of the things that makes Indivisible, I think, most unique is that it's kind of primary aesthetic is not um, trying to ape like Chinese or Asian or Western fantasy. It's yeah. actually set in, a, uh, in an environment that's inspired heavily by uh uh i want to say like indian and um like south continental asia oh, okay um yeah. so very very different aesthetics like the way the enemies are designed the folklore that some of the monsters you fight are pulled from um it's really a, a really good time um the only complaint i have so far with it is that i don't love the dialogue mm-hmm um, it's one of those games that's, like, trying so hard to be funny that there's kind of, like, a cringy joke, like, every other line. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how I felt about uh, Guacamelee, even though a lot yeah. of people like mm. that game. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. I, I mean, humor is tough, um, and a little bit goes a long way. But, like, I knew I was in trouble with... Uh, indivisible when one one of the earliest lines like the main character actually says well i am an unruly teen <laughs> like Ooh. like no 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 my dear uh show don't tell yes. be an unruly teen don't tell me you're an unruly like like i know it was it was trying to be funny and like tongue-in-cheek but it was really just bad writing so yeah um, it's it's hard because like a lot of what it's doing with like story and world building is good 
but it's it's the minute to minute dialogue and exchanges that are kind of cringy. Maybe mm-hmm. maybe uh, a rule should be like if you're going to put a line in a game, you should see how it sounds to an actual person outside, you know, of the context of the game cuz that to me just sounded really weird. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not great. And she was saying it to her father. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and then like 30 seconds later her father is like murdered by like marauders. And, like, the emotional, like, gravity of that is, like, a 30-second, like, oh, no, daddy's dead. Adventure time! Like, just, like, the, <laughs> it's, like, it's a little too Saturday morning cartoony in a way where, like, the emotions aren't fleshed out fully from, like, a character yeah. development standpoint. But it's weird because it's not a game for children. Like, it's clearly mm-hmm. designed for, for people kind of in our age group or a little younger who have an appreciation for like games like Valkyrie profile, right? Like, yeah, uh, Yeah. an eight year old or like a 11 year old is probably not picking this up. So Mm. it's a, it's got a bit of an identity crisis. Like that being said, it's a really well-made game. And and for all the hiccups in the writing, I just, the craft of it is phenomenal. And I'm I'm really pleased to finally be playing it. Uh, also, soundtrack by uh, Hiroki Kikuta, who did the original Secret of Mana soundtrack. Oh, nice. yes. Yeah. So, it, yeah, it's all around great game, full of love and respect for the genre. Um, so really enjoying that. Uh, and then the other game I recently received was my copy of uh, Wonderful 101 Remastered. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, I mean, that, I mean, I don't know how much can, I can really pay lip service to that that hasn't already been said, but it's a Kamiya game, so it's action bliss. <laughs> um, I, I'm definitely liking it a lot more on the PS4 than I liked it on the Switch without the touchscreen tomfoolery. Um, it's a bit feels a bit more like a straightforward action game. You just do the drawing actions with the right analog, like the old Okami on okay. PS2. Yeah. Also a Kamiya game. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, just really enjoying it. Wonderful 101 is really cool. It's an action game that takes place instead of from a traditional third person perspective like you would expect from like a Bayonetta or a Devil May Cry. It's got a bird's eye view overhead three quarter um, perspective. So everyone is really tiny as you move through the city. And um, the whole thing has this beautiful uh, toy-like aesthetic. So it almost feels like you're playing as miniatures in this kind of like brightly colored toy world. Um, so it just has like a very charming presentation and it's very tongue in cheek about like the classic Japanese costume tokusatsu hero kind of tropes. And it plays with that in a lot of interesting ways. Um, and the idea is that you, you kind of, you're playing as the character you're currently controlling, but at the same time, you're actually playing like an entire horde of characters. Um, and when you see citizens in the street that you can save, you can rope them into your group and like, can, and like keep expanding the size of the group you're controlling. And then the bigger the group you're controlling, um, you, you create what are called unite morph weapons by like doing the jet, what were touchscreen gestures in the original. And now they're gestures you do with the analog. So if you draw a straight line, then it forms a sword. And like the more guys you have, like the bigger and more powerful that sword can become as the stage progresses. So you end up with this like giant, like neon blue sword that like swipes like the entire size of the screen. Uh, it just, like tr- triumphant like superhero music is playing the entire time and like, like just goofy pulpy alien enemies to fight um very stiff challenge despite the toy like aesthetic it's just a real pleasure cool well glad that's uh coming out and glad you're enjoying it a bit more than you did the uh the original wii u version so yeah, yeah. I, know, I know you're a bit disappointed to have bounced off that because uh yeah Kamiya games are something we've we've all enjoyed at various points i think so absolutely yeah Mm. Cool. Anything else from you, Chris? Uh, I mean, I also got my Evercade, but <laughs> but, <laughs> but, we, but we don't have seven to, to twelve hours to talk about just the Data East collection alone. So I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, I've been playing a lot of uh, retro stuff on Evercade recently, and uh, you may have seen I'm doing uh, sort of coverage of the games individually over on MoeGamer.net because there's like 122 games there, so that's going to keep me in things to write about for quite a long time. So, which is nice. Uh, so I'll hold off on that for now because, uh, as we said uh, last time we're planning at least one evercade centric episode at some point so um other stuff that i have been playing though um uh and continuing my atelier mega feature over on moe gamer i'm on to manakimia 2 now uh, which is a game I bought about 10 years ago, uh, and it was still in the shrink wrap until this week. So 
Um, who says you never get anything off your pile of shame? <laughs> how did that? How did that feel to take the shrink wrapping off a PS2 game in 2020? Oh, it was good. It was a good feeling. I, th I think it's actually a new copy I got as well because, the, like, the inside is pristine. It's lovely. Oh, uh, so. something like the smell of that fresh plastic and everything. It's yeah, wonderful. Oh, yeah. That crisp yeah. instruction manual when there when instruction <laughs> yes. manuals were still a thing. Oh yes. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I've been, I've been enjoying that a lot so far. Um, I'm archiving my, my gameplay videos of that on my YouTube channel if you want to see what it's all about. Uh, so there's no commentary or anything. I'm just mostly archiving it for my own purposes so I can refer back to it and take screenshots and stuff. But if you do want to see how the game plays, then have a look at that. Uh, I'm playing Ulrika's Root first. She's the, the female protagonist, and hers is obviously the slightly more silly storyline, um, which has been very entertaining so far. She's a proper Atelier protagonist in that she's a complete idiot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, she's uh, surrounded by a, shall we say, a rather colourful cast of characters. Um, and then, yeah, once, once I finish her story, there's the other protagonist story, which I believe is different but sort of intertwines with hers at various points so i'm intrigued to see how they how they handle that this time kind of like tales of Gilia was um, kind of like, the, like like divergence points similar points like same adventure but from slightly it, different perspectives no it's more like convergence points at various points rather than rather than doing the same story and then splitting off at various points it's more oh, like okay. they, do, they do their own thing most of the time and they sort of cross over at various points that's cool because it because there's been various points in Ulrika's story so far where they run into the other party and they're doing stuff and they normally end up fighting because they end up hating each other quite quickly. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's been a ton of fun so far. Um, so keep an eye on MarioGamer.net for the ongoing feature there. Uh, other thing I've been playing is Ion Fury, which uh, came out physically for Switch last week, I think. Um, I did a short play video of it on my YouTube channel and I've just been carrying on playing it. Um, the build engine first person shooters are probably my favorite first person shooters of all time so having a brand new one in 2020 is is just an absolute delight and they have absolutely nailed everything about the late 90s um, first person shooter scene right down to all the stupid jokes on the billboards and stuff and the cringeworthy movie quote one-liners that the protagonist comes out with and the stupid weapons and so on um I really but want to play also, that. Yeah, it's great. It's great. They've also made a few like really nice refinements over the sort of old school formula as well. So rather than basing it on the original original build engine, which couldn't handle looking up and down very elegantly, um, they've based this on what they call the Eduke 32 engine, which um, to get technical for a minute, the problem with the original build engine is when you looked up and down, vertical lines stayed vertical. So um, it sort of looked distorted and sheared when you were angled anything other than looking straight ahead. But Eduke 32 rendered it more conventionally, so it looks more like a... I don't, don't know if I want to say more like a modern first-person shooter, but the, the, the actual perspective is correct when you're looking around now, which is nice. So that's, that's one major thing that they've done with it. The other cool thing in Iron Fury is that... Um, her signature weapon is like this triple barreled um, eight shot revolver or something like that. And there's a mechanic in the game where you can lock on to enemies with it and do a sort of McCree from Overwatch style lock on and blow everyone's head off in one smooth motion. And it's just such a pleasure to do that every time you do it. Um, there's there's lots of other ridiculous sort of noisy weapons in there as well. But just, just using this basic revolver is so much fun that I, I tend to find myself using that most of the time. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's a nice reminder of the good old days of first-person shooters when we had sprawling levels that you actually had to explore. There's multiple routes through them. There's tons of secrets. And yeah, it's a delight. It's a real delight. So if you haven't given that one a go yet, then I definitely recommend that. It's a lot of fun. It's genuinely funny. Um, and especially if you grew up with uh, any of these games on PC in the late 90s, then definitely worth a go. That game has a pretty interesting like development history. I'm trying to recall some of the details because it's related to another game that came out called Bombshell. Yes, that's right. Technically, it's a prequel to Bombshell. Um, now Bombshell was something that um, 3D Realms put out a few years back. Um, 2016, Bombshell came out, and that was a sort of top-down twin-stick shooter um, that ran on Unreal Engine 3, and they were trying to sort of establish a new character with that. Yeah. Um, and um yeah it had looking at the wikipedia article now it looks like it had some sort of trouble 
with um, with Gearbox software at the time because there were disagreements over the rights to various Duke Nukem things. Okay, um, that makes and, sense. Yeah, it sort of made it made it a bit troubled, and um, the final game had a fairly negative reception from the sound of things, but. I know some people who enjoyed it and they found it a bit of fun, um, but mostly, um, yeah, most, mostly Iron Fury is sort of largely unrelated to that. Aside from having the same main character, it's technically a prequel. Uh, but I the just gameplay, remember gameplay like is completely different and so on. Yeah, I just remember them making such a huge deal about Bombshell when like 3D mm -hmm. Realms was like, like you said, tr really just trying to establish a new IP. And like, I love the character design. Like, I like yeah. the idea of this character. So it's it's cool that. Uh, and I remember the the first one that that the top down one just dropping with like all the re the re reverberance of a wet fart. So yeah, so yeah. like it's cool that Ion Fury turned out good because maybe that means there's some hope for that character to kind of continue. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because she's I, neat. I, I think the 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 big deal with Bombshell is it was like the first thing that 3D Realms had really done for quite a long time. Sure. Um, and so and so people sort of had really high hopes for it, and then it, it turned out to be. A bit disappointed for a lot of reviewers, um, certainly. But uh, yeah, I Iron Fury certainly sort of sort of made up for past mistakes in that regard, and it's it's a very sort of authentic feeling, modern retro game, I guess. So we've talked about sort of um, enhanced retro things before with things like um, uh, what's it called, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, and that sort of thing. This is a different approach to it. So rather than taking the NES aesthetic. What we're doing here is we're taking a late 90s PC game aesthetic, complete with sort of limiting the number of colors on screen to 256. So you've got some lo lovely dithering going on in there as well. And yeah, they've they've nailed it. They've absolutely nailed it. Very cool. All right, it's good stuff. Okay, so we've all shared a few things there. Anything else people want to mention before we wrap up this first segment and move on to our news talk? I'm good. I'm all good for now. Alrighty, good stuff. Let's take a short break then, and then we'll come back and we'll, we'll uh, start plowing our way through the mountain of news we've got ahead of us. So we'll see you in a moment. Welcome back. For our second segment, we're going to be talking about all of the various news that's been happening during the Not E3 events and basically throughout June 2020 for the most part. Um, yeah, so we've got a big pile of news. It's in no particular order at the minute. It's just sort of as it's occurred to us. Um, and I'm sure we may think of some other things as we go along as well. But yeah, let's just start at the top then. So the first thing we've got on the list then is that... Um, I mentioned uh, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon a little while back. There's going to be a sequel to that game, uh, which is uh, coming out on July the 10th. So that's pretty soon, actually. Can't yeah. wait. I'm all over that. Yes. yes. Fantastic. We are, we are a pro into creates podcast around these parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I only actually got around to playing the first Curse of the Moon quite recently, but I absolutely loved it. I, I played it through, then immediately played through on the on the harder difficulty and all the true ending and everything like that and yeah it's, it's, it's great it's a wonderful love le letter to the original uh castlevania 3 with some new um you know some really brilliant new touches yeah yeah it's fantastic yeah. and, and um, what we appear to be getting here is three new characters on top of all the old characters so yes. now yeah yes. people were going nuts over dominique's new design yeah Dominique oh, is is Dominique the nun from yes. Ritual of the Night? Yeah. Yes, she is. Yes. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so um it's sort of one of the big things they're adding on this as well is there's two player co op now as well, isn't there? So um you can combine your attacks together or stand on each other to sort of reach different plays. I assume um, that's local only, right? It's it says it's local only, but if you, you can sort of figure something out with a PlayStation Four remote play and Steam remote play if you're feeling creative. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, te te technically it's local only, um, which uh, yeah, I, I would tend to expect that for 
a sort of retro style game like this um yeah like i say it's looking like it's coming out on july the 10th and it's going to be 14 dollars 99 so uh, with any yeah with any luck um limited run we'll jump on they, this again so we can they 100 copy of it as well, well. yeah they 100 percent well they, they yeah. have a very good relationship with Indicreates. Creates. I don't even question it anymore. The next yeah. game we will talk about, they will probably also have a physical copy of that. <laughs> uh, what have we got there? Oh, yeah. Azure Striker Gun Vault 3, uh, yes, another Indie yes. Creates game. Oh, these are these are lovely games. So have we all played these? Yes. I've, I played the first one, so I, mm. I'm a little bit behind. I own both Gun Vaults 1 and 2, and I have Luminous Avenger 9. But, yes. Um, uh, Azure Striker Gunvolt 2 only recently, like very recently, got a Steam release. So I was actually planning on playing it tonight, you know, after we were done here. Oh, nice. But... Cool. Yeah. Azure Striker Gunvolt 3, the fourth one. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, yeah. <laughs> Bravely Default 2, the third one. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I love no. you, Japan. Yeah. So I don't know. Strange. I don't know who this new girl is. She has a sword. I'm assuming it's kind of like zero-ish gameplay. If we're thinking like Mega Man ZX, it's like more melee combat rather than ranged. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, I watched um, the footage. I don't remember how she plays though, because I've been. It looks like she she's got a, a sort of combination of uh, sort of sword slashes, and she can she can throw special items to achieve various things as well, and deflect incoming stuff with her sword, and all that all that kind of thing. Um, she looks like she's got some sort of mark skill, a bit like Gunvolt has with his gun as well. So there's going to yeah. be some means of her sort of casting magic or something similar to uh, kill multiple enemies at once. Um, but yeah, it also looks like a, a significant part of her gameplay is going to involve deflecting projectiles as well. Oh, like that other game we talked about in the last episode that looked a lot like it integrates. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. What was yes. that game? That game looked cool as hell. Oh, uh, yeah. Ko Kogen, Kogen Sword of Rewind. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes. That very much looks like a, a gun vault game, actually, doesn't it? But, uh, yeah. Yeah, so um, it looks like, uh, judging from what uh what integrators have said so far uh is that there's there's going to be some sort of interaction between how this new character kirin and gunvolt play and that that interplay is going to be a major highlight of the game so i don't know if you're going to be sort of switching back and forth between them during levels or if there's going to be like some sort of cooperative play in there or something like that but uh yeah it looks 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 very cool and again as you say limited run will almost certainly get on that because they're very cozy with integrate so all right uh moving on uh next up we had a surprise announcement that um the the last wii game was not in fact a ubisoft just dance game um but we're actually getting wii and wii u versions of a game called shakedown hawaii um i know the name of this but i, I can't think what the actual game is are you familiar um, with this game at all it's the sequel to retro city rampage oh uh, of course yeah all right okay um so, so, so the details of this it looks like the wii version is coming out in europe and the wii u version is coming out in north america for some reason um so both of them will have um updates and dlc uh, on the disc so it's like a completely self-contained version that is as up to date as it possibly can be well that's that makes sense because you wouldn't have any way of updating it now would you yeah exactly <laughs> exactly I, I i think that i think the wii u servers will still update stuff but yeah the original wii definitely won't um yeah so uh, it's going to be stupid, in, and I want it. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be in limited quantities. Uh, the Wii version is going to arrive first on July the 9th. Uh, there's going to be three thousand copies of that. Uh, it will support both fifty hertz and sixty hertz for those who still care about that. Um, and anyone with any desire to still run things in fifty hertz these days is crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but there we go. And then the Wii U version is coming out in August 2020. Uh, they haven't announced the price for that yet. Um, Where it, is this like retail? I, I, or is they didn't really talk about like a, what house is printing these, did they? No, like, it, it it just says there's going to be three thousand copies and it will be sold starting July 9th. So I presume this is going to be something you'll have to order from somewhere. Yeah, um, but like it doesn't but, say like it doesn't say if it's limited run or strictly no. limited or or who. So I, no. I don't understand. And the, the the packaging doesn't seem to sort of indicate a particular publisher or anything. So I, I mean, maybe they're doing it themselves. So oh, that's possible. Know. 
yeah but anyway that's that's very cool to see uh new stuff showing up on wii and wii u because uh sort of I, I've, I've got quite into watching a few retro youtubers recently and they're all about sort of um new releases for classic platforms and so on i mean we've seen uh, stuff like Xeno Crisis and Tanglewood on Mega Driver, but there's there's new stuff coming out still for stuff right back to Atari Twenty Six Hundred as well. I think the the most recent thing that people have been getting excited about is um, the brand new Atari ST game has been oh. released uh, just recently called Randomizer, uh, which looks very cool. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's 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 cool to see Wii and Wii U getting some love still. Oh, it needs to be said too. If you don't care, there is a Switch version of Shakedown at Hawaii. Yes. Al- also, so <laughs> I didn't even realize. <laughs> and yeah, it is. It is direct on the, their website. V Blank is the name of the company. The, yeah. They're selling it directly. Yeah. So at the time of recording, it looks like it's available with 3DS, Switch, PS4, Vita, and PC. So Vita getting some love that's, as well. That's that's more or less all your bases covered, isn't it? Pretty much. Pretty much. All right, continuing on then. Uh, Puzzle Bobble is coming back in VR. Ooh, um, that's an old favorite. <laughs> yeah. Um, Puzzle Bobble, yeah, I have some really fond memories of actually because um, when I was doing work experience in year 10 at school, um, I went to London to, to spend some time in the PC Zone magazine offices with my brother. So like, I had the coolest work experience um, experience at the time. And uh, while I was there, Puzzle, Puzzle Bobble for PC um, came in and just brought the whole office to a complete standstill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like this was yeah. this was shortly after Quake had come out as well. So for people for it to distract people away from Quake at the time was uh, remarkable. I'd say but yes, so. yeah, definitely. So this new game here is just called Puzzle Bobble VR, uh, and it's been developed by Taito. Um, Primarily for Oculus Quest at the minute. That's the standalone Oculus thing, isn't it? Not the yeah, I think PC so. connected one. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't appear to be any word as to whether or not this is going to come to other VR platforms at some point. It'd be nice if it did, but at the moment it appears to be planned primarily for Oculus Quest. Perhaps yeah. a, a timed uh, exclusive or something. I, I think this is a really good use of VR. Um, mm. You know, for now we have like one big killer app for VR, and that's beat saber yeah or, or vr chat which is free but you know most everyone uses vr chat but something like this actually looks pretty fun yeah 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 it's cool so the gameplay is um yeah well i mean it's basically puzzle bubble in 3d you have bubbles floating around in front of you and you fling stuff at them using what looks like a sort of uh, catapult type thing yeah, yeah like a, a, a sort of traditional catapult slingshot uh it's got brand new tracks by zuntata as well which is cool um, I'm in. Authentic, authentic Taito experience for sure. Um, and uh, alongside that, they're also releasing an update for Bubble Bobble for Friends as well, uh, which has a new mode uh, featuring the return of Baron Von Blubber, no. which has 100, 100 new stages that focus on gimmicks rather than um, sort of defeating all the enemies. That's going to keep busy for a while. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Bubble Bobble for Friends by itself is pretty challenging. So, uh, yeah, another hundred stages on top of that is going to keep you busy for sure. I, I heard Bubble Bobble for Friends was rubbish. I, I got it a while back. It's it, I mean, it's it's Bubble Bobble. It hasn't really sort of done a, a, a great oh. deal with the formula, but it's 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 a solid Bubble Bobble game and the oh. whole original Bubble Bobbles in there as well. So, oh, so just, a, just an example of people having expectations that weren't met instead of evaluating the game on its own merits as, as exactly. usual. Exactly. I mean, I don't know what they were expecting, really. I mean, they always said, like, this is going to be a new Bubble Bobble game. And then it was, and everyone was disappointed. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so that's that bubble bubble news uh, for today uh oh this was an exciting one um so cl no surge and arno surge uh, are coming back um they're getting dx versions much like oh, some of the atelier boy. games have been released um so cl no surge is the sort of um visual novel slash life sim game that was originally for playstation vita came out in 2012 um never got localized um yeah. Which is a real shame because a lot of people have very um, sort of positive things to say about that if they've been able to sort of understand the story and so on. Yeah, uh, and it, then... it really would have helped because I remember playing uh, Arno Surge on PS3 uh, when mm-hmm. it first released, <laughs> yeah. and you, I mean, you only get the second half of the story, which means you're hopelessly lost, and yeah, 
I mean, it's it didn't, a, yeah, it's a it didn't deter sequel. from my from my enjoyment in the game in any way. Surprisingly, uh, it was literally the craziest game I've ever played in my life, <laughs> and that's not an insult. It's, I mean, it's really something. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, I mean, this it was kind of a big deal because the the Artanelico series as a whole, which this is sort of a, a follow up to is very very lore heavy and it's very heavy on like the background of the characters and stuff and so to come in halfway through it would yeah i haven't played it was off putting i, I yeah. found it off putting yeah okay. I, i've not played it and i searched myself yeah i do have the ps3 copy on my shelf but i haven't actually tried it yet but uh yeah if they do actually localize cl no surge i'll be very happy indeed because yeah. we can finally sort of enjoy that whole thing from start to finish but yeah if they feel like giving us both in some kind of collection you know so that we can experience the whole thing that would be just wonderful yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that'd I be can't... great and sort of with um i mean gust have been doing great with uh curry tecmo uh, sort of uh, with all the Atelier games and stuff. So I'd, I'd actually be quite surprised if they didn't bring this West this time around. But uh, yeah, I guess I we just a, have to keep our fingers crossed for the minute. Bet. The only the only thing I think might hit a snag is that that game has music from the late Origa in it. So I don't oh, yeah, know yeah. if they still have the rights to that or not. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's incredible music. Like, you know, it's... Oof. Mi video game music hardly gets better than those vocals that Origa sings during some of these tracks. You have to really listen to the OST for yourself to know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, again, Art and Attica as a whole has always been big on the sort of shivers down the spine music tracks and so on. Um, We've often talked about, uh, like, when I'm having a bad day, like, the Art and 2 soundtrack is essentially medicine. Like, uh -huh. Hymnos, yeah. like, the, the magic, the song magic of, like, Art and I honestly believe may actually be magic. Yep, yep. <laughs> absolutely. Like, yeah. People, th people who may not know this about Pete and I, but the core of our friendship began with a mutual appreciation for Artanelico. <laughs> I could the, see the, that. I could easily the first, see that. The first time we ever spoke was when Pete had written an article about Artanelico, and I had commented on it, and that was <laughs> and that was how we became friends. Was our mutual yeah. respect for the series. Yeah. Yeah, Art and Alec has always been super important to me, and probably the nerdiest thing I could admit is that I got married to Exec Cosmo Flips from Art and 3, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. So fingers crossed this 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 will happen with some sort of Western release. Um, so we'll have to wait and see though, because like all we know at the moment is that it's coming in some form. Now, let's be honest. There's gonna be a Western release because it's just uh, find me a find me a decent a JRPG from a decent house that hasn't in the past five years. Yeah, but, but yeah, the, the worst case scenario is we may have to import an Asian region English copy to get a physical one. That's yeah. like the worst case scenario. If, if I yeah. mean, if that's what happens, then you know it's still it's still absolutely worth it. Of course, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, because I. I got the original Arno. I never bought the PS3 version of Arno Surge because when by the time the PS3 version of Arno Surge came out in the West, um, there was already significant enough news about DLC for yes. it, and, and I and I knew we were that was already like well in the age of the complete edition. So mm -hmm. I was like, I'm gonna wait, and then the complete edition came out for the Vita, right? And and. Um, NIS published a copy of it in in collaboration with Koei Tecmo, and it was super limited quantities, super limited quantities. The only way to get it was to buy the special edition, and uh, I, I I think I paid sixty nine ninety nine or whatever it was, but mm -hmm. I I was hard up for money and I sold that for four hundred dollars. Wow! So, <laughs> so so like um. But like I regret selling it because I could never get it back again. Like now yeah. I go on eBay and I'm like, I didn't like it enough to spend four hundred dollars to get it back in my collection again. Well, yeah. so four hundred dollars so, is a lot for anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like now it's like cool. This may be an opportunity for me to finally get my hands on Arno Surge again, and I would assume mm -hmm. it whatever this DX version would include, uh, you know, all the DLC of the original. So yeah, yeah. Give give this to me, please, and thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, yeah, I asked. I actually asked in the Koei Tecmo official Discord, what are the chances of this coming here? 
And <laughs> so far, I've been met with silence. But if that ever changes, <laughs> I will let the two of you know. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Need to badger Nathan on Twitter. He's he's usually very open about this sort of thing. Nathan from Koei Tecmo Europe. He, uh, he likes to enthuse about things. Mm. So, yeah. Give him a poke. Um, right. Continuing on then, uh, we've got a new Earth Defense Force game on the way, uh, but this uh, one has a sort of voxel aesthetic. Um, yeah, that's a looks... that's a different direction for them. <laughs> There's also terrible. like a regular one coming out to yes. Earth Defense Force Five. Yeah, Earth Defense Force Five, which is again like the sixth or seventh one, isn't it, or something ridiculous? Yeah. <laughs> Earth Defense Force Five, so I think, the ninth I think one. I have that one. Yeah, I do have Earth Defense Force Five. Earth Defense Force 5 is really just like a kind of a polished up 4.1. Yeah. You know, it's really not that different. But uh, yeah. I had a lot of fun with it. Oh, this <laughs> is a great series. Yeah. So this uh, this new one, um, it's based in a peaceful box-shaped world, but something happened to cause it to break into pieces and scatter about. So uh, I'm anticipating there's going to be lots of shooting things and them shattering into voxel chunks in this and uh, yeah, yeah I, I can see that being a good fit for sort of the, the series ridiculous action gameplay it, I it wonder could appeal if... to the Minecraft crowd you never know I mean they oh, yeah, sort definitely. Of like that blocky style yeah I'm wondering yeah. if this isn't built with the same engine that that 3D dot game heroes was oh maybe maybe yeah it, it does look kind of similar to that mm. that was a fun game yeah that's a cool game that needs a re-release I mean, from software I have something to do with that yeah, yeah, that's weird. Um, anyway, yeah. So, so the the trailer for this looks like there's going to be sort of destructible scenery and stuff as well. So you're sort of blowing apart the city as well as blowing apart all the enemies that are around. And so the use of voxels allows it to sort of have that the flexibility to be super destructive and over the top. Which, uh, like I say, yeah, it's, a... it's kind of like you're playing with Legos in a yeah, you know, yeah. voxely video game. Hmm. Yeah, perfect fit for that series, I'd say. It's, uh, I'd imagine there'll be some kind of custom thing, too. Like, you could make your own helmet or something. Like, these kind of games always have something like, <laughs> like, a, like an editor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember 3D Dot Game Heroes actually had quite a thriving community of people just making custom characters and so on. They're like ridiculously yeah. over elaborate three dimensional anime characters and all that sort of thing. And, of course, the ability to wander around as a large three dimensional blocky cock if you wanted to as well. Of course. <laughs> I think I made a Gundam for myself. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, carrying on, uh, Samurai Showdown is getting a collaboration with For Honor, of all things. Um, yeah. For Honor, For Honor is a game I don't know a lot about, but I, it seems to have sort of quietly gone along and been quietly successful. Yeah, it's, um, it's kind strong of like community. a. I guess you would call it like a sleeper hit. I have a yeah. friend who plays, and I played myself. It's uh, it's interesting. You know, I I liked. I always like the concept of For Honor. You know, n knights versus Vikings versus samurai versus whatever. You know, that just sounds yeah. really cool. Um, unfortunately, I'm not very good at those sort of competitive games, so I didn't <laughs> really stick with it for long. But I was surprised to learn that it's really popular in Japan. J you know, Japanese gamers love For Honor, so. So that explains this, then. Because I was like, what the hell is this? Like, why yeah. Why is Samurai Showdown getting a crossover with an Ubisoft game? I don't... <laughs> you know, looking at it, I, it doesn't really look that out of place to me, you know? Hmm. Yeah. No, he, he fits, but, like... I just met like from a from like a company perspective and from like a cultural crossover sp perspective, it didn't make sense to me. Yeah, you kind of like, have to wonder how that came to be, mm. how that collaboration took place. It's like yeah. wasn't there like Assassin's Creed outfits in like Final Fantasy thirteen Lightning Returns or something? Like, some, like something sometimes like Ubisoft yeah. gets their like tendrils in like Japanese stuff in like a weird way. Yeah, it's strange. I, I've sort of seen quite a few examples recently of, of, of games that I didn't expect to really sort of resonate with J Japan sort of really being successful. Like, I know Apex Legends has been huge in Japan, for one thing. That um, makes sense, because the character design is quirky and has, like, a cartoony aesthetic to it. Yeah, I, I know it's, it's been a big hit with a lot of the um, of the virtual YouTubers as well, in particular. Like, yes, I've seen I do see a good amount of them playing at Apex, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, not... <laughs> like you say not not what i would have uh sort of expected but uh yeah it, it, it makes sense given given the the context of what's been going on so the character himself is uh is called the warden um which is the knight or one of the knight characters from um for honor 
I don't know much about how the game plays, so, but he's a, he's a Vanguard class, if that means anything to anyone. Um, and he's got a long sword. Um, yeah, he's got a big sword. <laughs> <laughs> the end. Good stuff. Right, uh, next up, uh, Criminal Girls X uh, is coming west, uh, but it's not been called Criminal Girls X. It's been called Escape from Asura for some reason. Um, this was revealed at the New Game Plus Expo, which was um, a sort of basically a, a day of digital events that would appeal to us specifically. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, Criminal Girls X, uh, if you're not familiar, we talked about this ages ago, I think, because it's been a while since we had any news on it. But this was originally going to be a free-to-play game for mobiles, Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4. Um, but there was sufficient demand in Japan for a standalone single-player version. Uh, so they ran a crowdfunding campaign to uh, to do that. It, it, it wasn't a campaign in the West. I think it was on like Campfire or something. It's the Japanese crowdfunding um, place. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, they were successful. There was enough demand to do that. And it's uh, coming out in August 2020 in Japan. Um, but it seems we're getting a Western version of this in some form. Um, so the details are sort of fairly thin on the ground at the minute but it appears that escape from asura is probably going to be uh based on the single player version of the game and and sort of chop out anything that was specific to the online mobile part of it i, I don't know exactly how it works but it, it, it's looking like that is the situation um it's strange that the criminal guy's name isn't on it but at I- the same time i can sort of maybe understand why they've done that because um as stupid as it is i know the criminal girl's name does not have the best reputation in the west thanks yeah, to certain it, forums we won't name it, <laughs> it is it is controversial um you know the game is banned on twitch you can't play c- criminal girls on twitch but yeah i don't know if that's yeah. the reason why or you know they just want to reboot it here or something like that yeah uh, yeah there are probably some internal discussions that happened if, yeah. if I just may chime in too and add my like history and development house geek two cents, this game is important because it's Mikage LLC, which is the form of the remnants of Image Epoch. Oh yes, yes, I remember you telling me this last time we we, we looked at that. So yeah, yeah. So, so if you some... like Time and Eternity and um, oh god, what are those great DS strategy RPGs? Uh, the name escapes me with the girls who sing. Oh god, why can't I think of it? They're so good. There's like three of them. I don't know. Image Epoch is great. Mm-hmm. And, and it, so is- Image, Image Epoch, I, I always remember as just being one of those uh, one of those development houses that put out stuff that people who actually played them really like, and then they get shit reviews everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Sands of Destruction. Um, oh, what was that one on the Wii that was incredible? Arc Rise Fantasia. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so like I say, the details are pretty thin on the ground for this one for the minute. Um, but uh, yeah, something is coming west for, uh, from this. So we shall see, have to wait and see what uh, what becomes of that. Okay, uh, next up, uh, one that a fair few people have been waiting for. Um, a Sure and the Wanderer game, The Tower of Fortune and the Dice of Fate, is coming to Switch and PC in uh, 2020. Uh, excellent, this year. excellent so, news. So this is the one that was previously on Vita, is that right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Do you, do you know much about this game generally? I, I'm not super familiar with Sheer and the Wonder. I know it's like a, a sort of really good mystery dungeon type game, but I, I don't know Basically, much about the specifics. It's like the gold standard of the mystery dungeon genre. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, the, the, the Tornico games kind of started it, but like... Sheer and the Wonder is kind of like the series that perfected and like polished the the mystery dungeon kind of subgenre to to like a fine gleam, and it's nice because yeah. it's it's not a licensed one. You know, there's a lot of licensed mystery dungeon games. So like, yes. if you want to play like a pure mystery dungeon game that's like cuts to the quick without any of the baggage of a of a license, like Sheer and the Wonder is really the way to go. It, it's kind of just the one. Mm-hmm. There was an Enderoid for for this too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, so this one is coming uh, later in 2020. No specific dates on that yet, but that is on the way for Switch and PC. It's always nice to see, always nice to see mystery dungeon type games on Switch because it's a, a platform I think that uh, really works well with them. Uh, other exciting news that we probably all expected is that Ease 9 is coming west uh, for Switch, PS4 and PC. Um, that will be coming out in 2021. Uh, once again, it's Nice America is handling that. Um, this was the last thing that they showcased at the New Game Plus Expo. So uh, Ease 9 is the sort of um, kind of dark and edgy ease from what we've seen so far. Uh, with all the monster transformations and that sort of thing. Uh, Western release is going to have English and Japanese audio, English and French subtitles. Um, PC version will come out on Steam and GOG. And uh, like I say, PS4 and Switch uh, versions will be out there as well. Yes, as a PC MR person, I'm very happy to know that Durante is already working with Nisa on this one. Yes, yes. Yes, so um, yeah, he's done quite a bit with... Um, sort of Nisa, uh, Nisa and Xseed and, and stuff on recent PC ports, and they've been really solid. I th think the, the PC version of E7 was really good, wasn't it? I haven't gotten so to it yet, so I couldn't mm. tell you. Yeah. Yeah, so looking forward to that. Uh, I should probably play E8 at some point. I've been saying that for a very long <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, I think I think I've heard it's, it's recommended to wrap up E8 before getting into E9, because I think there's callbacks. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, the Ease timeline is all over the place at this point, but e e according to this article I'm reading, Ease 8 is a sort of flashback, uh, whereas Ease 9 is a uh, a sequel to Ease 7. Oh, so, okay. So that continues after the event of Ease 7. So I'm going mean, I mean, to need to do all of them. <laughs> yeah, I was going to do much. all of them anyway, but... Yeah, I mean, you should do that anyway, because they're all amazing games, yeah. but, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ease 7 was kind of the point where it changed from... Um, sort of what I tend to think of as classic ease to uh, modern ease. So we, yeah. we kind of we kind of moved away from the bump combat and that sort of thing into more sort of hack and slash and active skills and that sort of thing. So, well, six, yeah. six really? Did you did you not play? You played six? Oh no, you're right. Yeah, yeah, six, six. Yeah, I'm six was like the six was like the one specifically yeah. the PS2 port of six where it did away with the 2D character models and did it all 3D. Then it was like really actiony. Oh, okay, cool. And then, yeah, I've I've only played the PC port of six, which still has the sort of pre-rendered sprites. I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it plays yeah. the same. It plays the same on the PS2, but they got yeah, rid, yeah. rid of the pre-rendered sprites and replaced them with polygonal models. Yeah. Um, but that's when it really started with that, and then. Um, uh, oh, it's right, like Felgana as well, wasn't it? Yeah, as well, the, which yeah, used the which used the six similar. engine. Yeah, because mm. the same engine as six, and then and then came uh, then came seven. Yes. Oh, I, I think I'm. Th I think I'm thinking of seven as the one that sort of added um, like multi multi party members and yes. uh, polygonal characters and something. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking of. So yeah, yeah, yeah. party so, east. So, we'll call it party east. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, continuing with Falcom news, uh, Trails of Cold Steel Four is coming on October the twenty seventh of twenty twenty. So those of us who are uh, waiting for the complete collection before we actually play it can add another <laughs> copy to our shelves oh, and not I've, play I've, it. No, no, I'm playing it. <laughs> I I played uh, Cold Steel Three the moment it came out. I I yes. couldn't wait. You yeah, know, you've, this you've, is a you've, story in a world that grips you and it doesn't let go. It just keeps yeah. you wanting more. Yeah. Oh, I, I I know very well. I've I played the first Trails in the Sky on PSP ages ago and was thoroughly gripped by it. But I also remembered how long that game took me to get through. <laughs> yeah, so Cold, thought, Cold Steel Three actually had a more reasonable length compared to Cold Steel Two. So oh, okay. Cold Steel Two took me. Oh man, it had to be like 120 or 130 hours with Jesus everything. Jesus Christ! So you have the main game. And then there's an interlude, and then a post game, and it's just I, I don't want to say anything else, you know, for people who have played. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, Falcom! It is I a love long you so runner. much. <laughs> Falcom and Exceed, here are please. Switch complete. <laughs> cold uh, trails in the sky set. Switch yes. complete trails in the sky set. It would be nice. Yes. yes. One cart, all three games. Mm. Or PS4, whatever happens, but yeah. they've all been translated, they all exist, give them to me. So yeah, yes. friend friendly warning for anyone who hasn't played Cold Steel, do not play Cold Steel 4 before playing the first three, you will 
be totally lost and be spoiled <laughs> oh, on yeah. so many things. Yeah, these are episodic. This isn't some Final Fantasy level shit. These games no. are like an anime. You, 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 should you play start at the order. beginning of the story. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, if you're if, if you if you're being picky about it, you should play all the Trails in the Sky first, shouldn't you? And then play Trails of Cold Steel. And it, it would help. Yeah, it would help. Yeah. And a lot of people also say, oh, well, you should play the Crossbell games as well in between. But uh, yeah. Well, can't, they, I don't they, speak there Japanese. Are f- so. Yeah. There are fan translations on the way for those at the moment. Um, and then there's also that PS4 version of, of those. Uh, which, we're going to uh, get those. People are yeah. ravenous for this series yeah. now. There's no question in my mind that we're going to get those. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty certain we will have the the whole series uh, for people to enjoy at some point, uh, which will be good. And uh. um, what I what I'm planning to do is much like I'm doing with the Atelier series right now. I'm going to do a, a complete feature on all of them on Mario Gamer when uh, well when I finish the Atelier series first of all, and secondly uh, when they're all available. So I've been stocking up on them in the meantime. When I retire, I'll play this series. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> It's the only way we'll have time for it. Yeah. Oh, All right. for sure. For sure. Cool. Good stuff. All right. We're about halfway through our list of news in a minute. So do you guys want to take a short break for a bit? And then uh, we can come back and do some more? That sounds good Sure, to me. why not? Alrighty. Okay. So we're going to go and grab drinks and refresh our sore throats and all that sort of thing. Um, and we'll be back in just a moment. So we'll see you then. The Disciple of the Eight Leaves, One Blade School. I graduated from Thor's Military Academy and became an instructor at the branch campus. Together with my friends and students, I pledged to dispel the dark shadows hanging over Erebonia. Welcome back. Refreshed from our various activities, uh, we now return to our discussions of the various news that has been happening during the not E3 season of 2020. Uh, so next up on the list I've got is that um, there's more Neo Geo Pocket games coming to Switch. Um, so the next one that is coming out is King of Fighters R2. Um, and it seems like they're making a, a sort of real range of these. So SNK Gals Fighters is already out. Uh, King of yes, Fighters I are... love. I love this. I mm. love this little chibi style they've got. It's, yeah. it's very cute. Yeah, it's awesome. And like a, a lot of people have like really fond memories of these games because they're they're very sort of simple takes on fighting games, but that mean that makes them quite accessible. But they've actually got a decent amount of depth to the gameplay as well. So they're great. Yeah, very fun. I remember, regarded. you know, the Samurai Showdown came out, and it was a pre-order bonus for the the new Samurai Showdown game. Mm-hmm. And then Gal's Fighters came out, and I was like, I'm sensing a pattern. <laughs> and now, uh, and now this is cool. And they're actually now they've like they've officially made it clear. They call it Neo Geo Pocket Color Selections. So like yeah. they're, they're they're they've now dubbed it a series. They've now made it clear that this is a thing we're doing. Yeah. Um, and I couldn't be happier because I love the NGPC. Um, mm-hmm. I'm 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 more excited for the analog pocket console because of the adapter for neo geo pocket color than i am for the actual <laughs> game boy stuff yeah yeah and uh, as you might expect in the official evercade discord there are a lot of people bugging them to uh, do a neo geo pocket color cart as well oh jeez <laughs> oh that would be incredible get mm-hmm. biomotor unitron and crush roller and dark arms up in there oh fossil a <gasps> oh fossil is <laughs> so good I um I don't I don't know the Neo Geo Pocket Color at all. So so you're just you're just yelling words at me at the minute. But I love oh it. god, Fossile <laughs> Fossile is a strategy RPG, turn based, grid based strategy RPG with like mecha, um, and it goes for quite a bit of money. <laughs> I, I, was, I was I was just thinking I, I've I've heard that name before and um. Kimmy Me, who we've mentioned a few times on this podcast, she's a, yes. a blogger who covers a lot of obscure, um, not exclusively, but mostly Japanese stuff. Like literally today, uh, she's written an article on Fasole on uh, Neo Geo Pocket Color. So yeah, there you go. She loves the Neo Geo Pocket Color. Mm. Cause she did a really delightful write up on the Neo Geo Pocket version of Sting's Evolution series. Yes, yes, which is quite good. But yeah. Um, like a fully boxed copy of Fossile, I'm looking at anywhere between 100 and 250 dollars con- for based on condition. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Cart cart only like fifteen bucks, but also it's a strategy RPG in Japanese, so uh -huh. yeah. whatever. But it, it's, it's also quite, quite. Yeah, it's also quite interesting in that it's uh, it's a game by Sacknoth as well, who made yeah. Developer and Shadow Hearts. So yeah, if you if you're into their stuff, then this is uh, sort of worth worth looking out for to enter the collection. Um, but yeah, from <laughs> we, we're getting completely off the point of what we were saying here, but, but whatever. I mean, Faster Lace sounds like an interesting game because of the the way that you like command your units in it is like programming them in logo. So like, oh you, cool. You, so like, you tell them to 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 move forward a step, then turn right, then fire their weapon, then move forward, then turn right, and and so on. And uh, so yeah, plenty of plenty of scope for. Uh, comically miscalculating <laughs> uh, yeah so i did i found a copy of the english version on ebay it's going for 220 gbp so over 250 us dollars oh good lord good yeah lord. all good right stuff. um so anyway yeah king of fighters is coming out on switch <laughs> <laughs> Um, continuing on, another um, another sort of series of classic games coming to Switch. We've got the Metabots Collection, or Metabox Classics Plus, uh, is is coming to Switch. It's basically a port of a 3DS compilation, from what I can tell. Uh, I don't know this series. T tell me about it. Uh, it's a if bit like, what if you mashed up Armored Core and Pokemon? Right, so oh, okay. like you're, you're, yeah. you have these cute robots, but you can also you customize and build them and like swap parts and stuff. Yeah. Um, the big deal, I mean, this is probably not coming out in the West ever because mo many of these games were never translated, and it's a collection mm -hmm. of um, eight games. It's a tremendous. It's eight RPGs, um, and this is actually a port of the original Metabots Classics was the all five of the original games um and then this is adding more and bringing it up to eight yeah this, this plus collection the first mm -hmm. five titles um and then this is adding some of the newer ds versions so it, this is this goes all the way back to the game boy mm -hmm. game boy game boy color game boy advance the original metabots and the original game boy two three four and five were on the game boy color navi g and two core on the game boy advance and then it's adding the ds ones as well this is so this is a ma this is a massive undertaking mm. it's basically the entirety of the series oh that's cool well uh, and there was a really charming anime as well um which did get western localized i don't remember if any of the games got localized in the west or not i i, I vaguely know the name but it might be uh, i might know it from the anime um yeah, yeah I'm, cer I'm certainly not familiar with the games at all but uh Pokemon and Mech sounds right up your alley, certainly. <laughs> yes, it's it's still. I mean, like I loved the anime and I collected the models for quite a long time. Um, very, very much love this property. Um, like I said, it's super doubtful that we'll ever see an English version of this, just based on the scale of the translation effort that would be necessary because it's mm -hmm. eight RPGs. But um, it's just cool from a to mention from a historical. Um, preservation perspective that all yeah. eight of these games are going to be available for modern consoles in one way shape or form yeah cool all right uh continuing on then uh r type final two has been quietly continuing with development in the background um and mm -hmm. there's a demo launching in july 2020 for those who backed the project Wow, um, R Type is still going. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They did a they did a Kickstarter for for R Type Final Two a while back that uh, sort of did did it do well? I I, I forget. From, did well enough from that they're did. making the game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's all they need, isn't it? So yeah. But yeah, um, and I I haven't played R Type since the Game Boy days. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. So so I mean, this is looking this is looking really lovely, and uh, R Type Final Two is adding lots of customization and stuff. So. Excuse me, got a helicopter going over. Um, it looks like uh, there's going to be plenty of like pilot customization and uh, swapping out parts on your spacecraft and so on. But the the, the gameplay is like pure classic side-scrolling R type, just just presented in high definition 3D from the look of things. So yeah, yeah. just the way I like it. Exactly. Yeah. One of the the quirky parts of the Kickstarter was the stretch goals were actually to add HD recreations of classic R type stages. Oh, okay. So yeah. like, that's one of the things that like people like 
old school R type fans are most looking forward to about this new one is, mm. is they got far enough to like oh like we're gonna take this famous stage from R type final and this famous stage from R type three and like incorporate them into the new one like remade mm-hmm. with the modern graphics. Um, Damn. Like if you're a if you're a mech head and like a, a anime machinery geek like I am, just these screen these like hanger screenshots of like these highly detailed like close ups of the R type ships have me like all types of hot and bothered. <laughs> <laughs> like I am a thousand percent on board with this shit. Yeah, yeah. Now it looks like they've done a really good job of of sort of transplanting a lot of the classic sprites into three D. Like the the ship looks great. It's, it's sort of really capturing the the feel of the original um in 3d so yeah so apparently there's more um details coming on the on the the upcoming demo for backers in the monthly report that they do on the official website for our type final 2 so keep an eye on that if you want to find out a bit more about details of that hello cat <laughs> anyway um <laughs> we've got a cat joining us so we're now a four member podcast um right Continuing on, uh, next thing we've got is that um, Exceed Games has uh, funded and will be publishing a game called Potionomics, uh, which uh, looks like a a thoroughly charming game. Uh, This was shown off at the PC Gaming Show, uh, which which PC Gamer have done for the last few years at uh, at E3 and also at not E3. So um, this is a hybrid of RPG and shop simulator where you run a potion shop, as you might imagine. Um, and in classic shop management game, you're up against the debt collectors. And um, yeah, you, you basically have to brew potions, explore places, get ingredients, that sort of thing. So I just... Yeah, it looks... You have to watch the footage to fully understand how beautifully expressive these character models are. Mm. Like I, that's why like I don't know anything about this game, but this animation, like these character models, the the facial expressions, yeah, and like the way they emote, is insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a lovely looking game. It's got it's got a sort of um, kind of DreamWorks Pixar look about it, hasn't it, with the characters? Yeah, like a fused a bit, yeah. with anime. Like it's got mm. an anime sensibility, but like clearly from a Western perspective. Yeah, yeah, and then. Yeah, look, looking at this footage, it seems to sort of switch back and forth between these these lovely animated close ups, and then it's sort of the overview of the ge- of the gameplay and the sort of strategic decisions you make is sort of from a a, a more cartoony chibi style from the look of things. But uh, dare I, yeah, dare yeah, I you're say, right. Yeah. Uh, Racketeer vibes, maybe, maybe. <laughs> you know, I've been I've been <laughs> looking for something like that for a long time. You know, mm-hmm. that that game was great, and I'm I'm glad we're getting something fresh that's kind of in the same vein. And uh, and I just really love it when XC goes out of their way to, um, you know, really support uh, indie indie projects like this. So this yeah. one I'm going to be taking a particularly close look at. Yeah, yeah. I th- I think that's that's sort of XC's real strength. I think sort of they they kind of got burned a bit with the Trail series. I think where they yeah. I think they took on a bit too much with that, and so I think they're sort of getting a bit more back to almost their roots now with with sure. sort of these these smaller scale stuff and i think it, it's really going to benefit them in the long run um and, uh, yeah this looks this looks thoroughly charming so i'll be happy to throw them some cash this summer when katakawa jet girls comes out too yeah oh, yeah oh, definitely yeah. definitely yeah all right uh continuing on with the trend of uh, weird and quirky games fight crab is coming to switch <laughs> on august 20 um and it's a game about crabs who fight <laughs> yes they fight with actual weapons it's, yes it's really something you have to see it to believe it because <laughs> this is in that same series of all those weird like ocean life combat games right that have that have come out like yeah. sea commander or whatever they yeah are. like this a- is like the ace, fourth ace of seafood was the, it was yeah, the ace yeah. Of seafood. yeah this is like the fourth game in that series like this has been around for a while now yeah yeah I, it's so stupid and i love it it takes me back i don't know how if either of you guys have this uh have any kind of a history with like new grounds back in like the early days of like flash animation and shit oh yeah but like yeah, does anybody I've been there. does anybody remember metal gear solid 3 crab battle <laughs> no. i don't think i saw that one no but it sounds amazing <laughs> it's yeah anyone who has not seen this needs to get on this it's a uh, it's making fun of the fact that in metal gear solid 3 you could eat like the animals you found 
like you could like sh- like if you saw like a crab you could like stab it and eat it to like restore your health and like yeah. they they made this like flash animation where like snake like tries to kill a crab but he like can't cuz it's like stronger than him <laughs> and, then, and, and then he like has a fight with a Kenyan mangrove crab in like a crawl space, and it like destroys, <laughs> and it just like just des- and it, like destroys him. And like this voice actor is like really good at doing like a proper like David Hater like snake like grizzled impression, and it's just like he just keeps gr- grunting and going crab battle. Mm, crab battle and, and like, <laughs> like you you have to watch metal gear solid 3 crab battle it's like the golden age of flash animation but every time i see screenshots for this like i just hear snake in my head going crab battle <laughs> <laughs> oh great yeah no I, I love that these games exist i i just happened to be like browsing the e-shop last night and i think there's like a coming soon page for this already and my wife was in the room at the time and she just looked at it and just went crab battle and I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I missed, I missed all the other ones. I really should get this one. <laughs> look at this, like a, like, look at this stuff. The poster. One of the crabs just has a double barrel shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's as ridiculous as it gets. I, yeah, there's another one just just riding a seal as well, and the seal's got like a harness on him. <laughs> and like, uh, what's terrifying about this is, like. If you've never seen these games and you hear us talk about them, you're probably imagining cartoon crabs. No, 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 no. <laughs> these, <laughs> these are like... No, these are realistic-looking crabs. Hideously <laughs> realistic crabs. Because I'm fucking terrified of actual crabs. Like, <laughs> have you ever, like, looked at a crab's face with its, like, yeah, weird, it's... like, spindly things? And, like... Crabs are terrifying. So, like, <laughs> everything... Like, this is, like, the scariest survival horror game I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, as these crabs have knives. Like, mm-hmm. we, have, we have no future. There's one with a naginata. What, what yep. is... Go- <laughs> and one with a drill arm as well. Yep. <laughs> Ter- oh, and there's, there's yeah. one that has, like, Valdo. <laughs> like, one of the uh, things that, like, Valdo has from, like, Soul Calibur. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, we're done for. The crab when the crabs learn how to use combat knives. Uh, yeah, you're fucked. Yeah, so <laughs> this is actually already available in early access on PC. Uh, you can get it via Itch and Booth, um, but it's officially releasing on August the twentieth for Switch, uh, and is leaving early access on PC on July the thirtieth as well. So yeah, not long to wait until you can live out your worst crustacean nightmares. Um, <laughs> Come one v one me in uh, crap battle, bro. In the future, this is how all disputes will be decided on the international in the, on the international stage. <laughs> fight crab. I also love that it's not crab fight; it's fight crab. Yeah. Like you awesome. are a you are a fight crab. Yes, yes. Uh, moving back into the more wholesome side of things. Um, <laughs> Um, Freedom Planet's developer Galaxy Trail has uh, is moving into sort of publishing some other games as well, and they've got this adorable '90s looking puzzler called Petal Crash coming out, which has this sort of lovely uh, pixel art aesthetic about it. Super cute characters and uh, some interesting looking gameplay that isn't just your standard sort of match three or bejeweled ripoff or anything like that. This this looks like it should be a really fun game actually. Aesthetically, it hues very close to the Neo Geo Pocket Color too, in terms of resolution and the limited the limited colors. Yeah, yeah, I, I can gu- see that. Mm. Yeah, if you look at the character sprites in particular, sort of the, the the large areas of flat color on them and that sort of thing, and the the limited number of colors in one sprite as well. That's uh, yeah, very sort of Neo Geo Pocket Color, and maybe maybe a bit of Game Boy Color influence in there as For well. For sure. Um, but yeah, this is. Um, there's a Steam page up for it now. I don't think it's available yet. No, it's a planned release date for summer 2020 at the minute. Um, a lot of developers are, are keen to point out these days that if you add, add stuff to your wish list on Steam, it helps like promote it in Steam's algorithm or whatever as well. So if you, if you are oh. interested in this, it's worth just adding that onto your wish list as well and help it get seen by a few more people. So cool. uh, awesome. worth noting. Yeah. Uh, we, love, we love Galaxy Trail in these parts. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, I mean, they're just publishing this one, but uh, yeah, for them to sort of throw their name behind it, they must have uh, have plenty of faith in it. So, yeah. good stuff. And, and it and means if we support it, they will get money. 
So. Yes, and uh, them getting money means free and planet too. So, all good. Oh yeah, it's yeah. the apex of my life. I can die <laughs> after Freedom Planet too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, nice. Carrying on, um, there is a, yet another. Do you say pie cross or pick cross? I've I've never known. I've always I said, said Picross. Yeah, I've always yeah. said Picross. Yeah. I, I, like, it's one of those words that in my head I look at it and I think Picross, and then everyone else I know says Picross. Okay, so Picross. Uh, Picross S Mega Drive and Mark III Edition is coming for Switch, uh, which features lots of Sega stuff, uh, like Sonic and, and the like. Um, so this was announced at Bit Summit, which is sort of the, um, the indie, um, the Japanese indie festival that happens around this time of year. Uh, for the last few years um yeah this uh, will be a nice compliment to was it that konami one that you were addicted to on mobile for a while chris i, I still am i was playing it yesterday <laughs> play that i play that constantly yeah konami yeah. pixel puzzle challenge yeah best free game on mobile phones everyone should have it <laughs> awesome yeah it's yeah. definitely picross because the the type of puzzle that it is is a pictogram Right? Oh, of course that makes sense yeah, doesn't it yeah it's not yeah. a pyktogram um <laughs> but yeah i love i love picross um still like still whip out picross 3d on the original ds yeah masterpiece yeah yeah i think my, my wife's switch is mostly full of picross games <laughs> <laughs> i believe that it and, yeah that and animal crossing um is keeping it keeping her busy on the switch so yeah so that is coming I don't know when at the minute. Um, it's, it's just coming, apparently. So watch out for that, I guess. Uh, and that's on Switch. Uh, moving along, uh, we've got some Konosuba news. Uh, so there is a first print bonus for the uh, recently announced Konosuba game, uh, which is called Konosuba God's Blessing on This Wonderful World. Love for this tempting attire. Um and the, the, the bonus game is called uh, Konosuba, God's Blessing on This Wonderful World, Kazuma's Jump Out Adventure! Exclamation mark. I just uh, love, love the way this looks. It just <laughs> looks like Megumi in Space Harrier. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, as soon yeah. as I saw this screenshot, my, my brain collapsed in on itself. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is pretty beautiful. So you've got this lovely pixel art and you've got this sort of retro style checkerboard ground level and sort of stuff off in the distance that you'll probably never reach and huge enemies and that sort of thing yeah this is apparently a pseudo 3d action shoot 'em up uh, and you'll be able to control kazuma aqua megumin darkness union and chris um and and fight all sorts of enemies from mostly focusing on the second season of the anime from the sound of things i don't um, even care about the actual game i just want this <laughs> yeah yeah and uh just to add to that sort of retro sega feel about it it's got a stereoscopic 3d mode as well where you can re wear classic style red and blue 3d graphics uh, 3D glasses to to have things popping out of the screen at you so that's exciting and the, wow, the that did, takes me back yeah and the limited edition of the game will come with a pair of such glasses so you can you can jump right into that so that's nice um yeah, I don't know much about the main game itself, but uh, yeah, as I say, that's going to be like a first print bonus with it, so uh, jump on that if you want it. <laughs> uh, continuing on, we already talked a bit about Earth Defense Force 5, uh, but PQB has announced that there's going to be a physical release of it for PlayStation 4 in September of 2020, and that's coming to both North America and Europe. So it's currently available already for PlayStation 4 and PC uh, digitally. Um, there's a Japanese physical version already, um, but yeah, North America and Europe are getting a physical release in September. So if you want uh, a copy of that on your shelf, you can do that. P Cube is so great. Yeah. No, no, a couple episodes ago we talked about that Nexomon, that mm -hmm. like a uh, that Pokemon style game, and and now P Cube's doing a physical pressing of that uh, in both uh, US and PAL regions. Yeah. Yeah. Like they in they, August. Yeah. They just they just know their market. They they understand what people want from um th this sort of games from the kind of games that they publish they know that there's a significant crossover between people who enjoy that type of game and people who enjoy having crap filling up their shelves so <laughs> yeah i love yeah. crap yeah definitely so yeah uh long live them i guess Indeed. right 
Uh, continuing on, uh, the next Sega Ages game for Switch is going to be Herzog 2, which is the Techno Soft strategy game, isn't it? This is the this is basically the game that invented the real time strategy game. That's, remember, yeah, right? like, isn't it? yeah, 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 yeah. Herzog 2 is considered like the progenitor of what we consider the RTS genre. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I, I've I've never actually played this, but um, no. have you played it at all in the past, either of you? I've emulated nope. it. Mm-hmm. Um, I certainly it's haven't played it. Mm. I certainly haven't played a physical copy of it. Yeah. Um, but I have played it on emulators. Mm-hmm. Um, it's. I mean, I'm not good at. Um, you know, I'm not good at these kind of games at all. No, me neither. Um, but it, it's essentially like. It's got RTS elements because you like manage bases and you send like robots out of the bases and like direct them to like march and like make attacks on enemy bases. Yeah. But you're but you are your ship and you fly around and then your ship can control transform mm-hmm. into a robot. So it has like uh, vertical shoot 'em up elements too. It almost yeah. plays a lot like. Do you remember Thunder Force Two? Yes. Yes. I was just going to o- say it looks quite a lot like Thunder Force Two. Yeah. It's like imagine if the overhead sections of Thunder Force Two had real time strategy elements, mm-hmm. um, with base with bases that you had to control. Yeah. Um, it's cool. I mean, this is one of the the original Herzog Spy is one of the most sought after games for the Genesis. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm looking at copies on eBay right now. Cart only fifty bucks, complete upwards of a hundred dollars mm-hmm. for the English for the English version. It's yeah, it's very very well sought after. I mean, tech, Technosoft uh, Technosoft games in general. Um, I could do a whole episode just on like the legacy of Technosoft, specifically their support of the Mega Drive. Yeah, is um, legendary. That would be another great um, house for the Evercade to revive a Technosoft mm. cart with a. Uh, El Viento, Herzog Zwei, Ernest Evans. Yeah, they're they're a wonderful, wonderful group. Yeah, yeah. So this Sega Ages release um, is uh, sort of adding a few extra features to the Mega Drive original. So it's got sort of information panels down the left and right hand sides of the screen. So you can keep an eye on, um, I I have no idea what any of these mean, but there's a lot of meters and numbers on these screens. Um, (laughs) Well, it, um, is a, it is an RTS, right? Yeah, ex- exactly. But yeah, but, but basically, the the fact that this is running in widescreen, but the game is four by three, means it's got this extra space to allow you to constantly have this information on hand that you wouldn't have been able to refer to in the same way in the Mega Drive original. So that's going to help people out. There's apparently also a helper mode as well. So if you suck at real time strategy games, you could modify your base camp endurance, mech endurance, and weapons development budget, aka cheat. Um, and there is the original split screen two player mode and also online play as well um that's cool the online play sort of simulates playing a split screen game against another person so it it still appears in split screen on your tv so it's 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 like it would have been playing against another player on the same uh mega drive or genesis so that's really cute i like Mm -hmm. that a lot yeah there's also a uh there's also actually a full tutorial as well uh which is a, a very welcome site um so it will theoretically teach you how to play uh, as you go through as well um so yeah this is sort of a really good example of what sega have been doing with these sega ages releases which is not just re-releasing these games but giving us a authentic perfectly emulated version of a classic game but then adding extra stuff around it both to make it more accessible to new players and also to sort of enhance the lifespan of it as well with things like the online play and so on so yeah, I, I I will. I mean, this is this 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 is one of those games that's just sort of frightening to look at. But I will probably give it a go because uh, I get the impression it's one of those games that sort of once you sort of figure things out for yourself, it might not be quite as scary as it looks. But we'll have to wait and see, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, tutorial certainly helps. I mean, this, mm-hmm. we're talking about a 16-bit game here, so like, uh, if you fire up Herzog Zwei on an emulator and you never had an instruction manual, you didn't mm-hmm. watch YouTube videos on like, yep. what WTF is this? It's pretty much just like, welcome to Herzog Zwei. You're dead now. 
<laughs> like that's and like, it's just one of those games where it's like you learn by bludgeoning your head against the wall consistently <laughs> until you eventually beat the first level on easy mode yeah and then it's like oh i think i know what i'm doing and then you switch it to normal mode and i get ra- <laughs> and i get ravaged instantly <laughs> because like somehow somehow an ai from a 30 year old game on a 16-bit console is still <laughs> smarter than me. So- <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. So, that is apparently coming soon to Japan um, on Switch. And the last time we got a bit of news like this that said it was coming soon to Japan, it followed very shortly afterwards in the West. That was with G-Lock, I think. Is that, yeah. That- um, so yeah, this that surprised shouldn't be t- us. I mean, there's obviously more text to translate in this than there was in something like G-Lock, but... Um, it shouldn't be too long, hopefully. So I have to uh, keep an eye out for that one. I, th- I think I've got all of the Sega Ages releases on Switch now. I've, I've just sort of... like Even if I haven't played them very much, I've just picked them up just because they're such lovely, lovely versions of those games. I would love, like, a cart with a collection of them on them. Oh, yeah, you and me both. Oh, yeah. just, for the f- just for the Fantasy Star 1 with the map alone. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, next up... Uh, there's a new Fallen Legion game on the way. This is called Fallen Legion Revenants, and this is coming for PS4 and Switch. So there have been two previous Fallen Legion games. I actually only realized that there was two previous ones recently, because I've got the one that's on Switch. Uh, which That's I'm... both of them, though. Oh, is it? Okay. That, that's Fair like enough. one. Yeah, the one on Switch is a collection of both of them on one cart. Oh, okay. That's cool, then. Yeah, because I was thinking I'd have to seek out another one, but uh, there we go. No, you got them. As long as you have the one NIS published. Yes, that's the one. Because yeah. Limited Run did publish them separately as well. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if they did on a Switch. That might have been on a Vita they published them separately. Yeah. But, yeah. uh, yeah. This is a really interesting series. Do you know anything about this series? I don't, know. So, yeah. so the developer, Yummy Yummy Tummy, was is uh, a, a development house that was started by the founder of Silicon Era. Oh, oh okay. I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what's cool about these games is they're not Japanese at all. They're just Japanese-like games that are made by a man who has a serious freaking understanding of Japanese games because yep. he was uh, a founding member of one of the better Japanese news games, game news sites there is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I haven't even played them yet, but they are also uh, Valkyrie profile-like. Yeah, the the, com- the combat is often that side on perspective with each character mapped to a specific button. Mm-hmm. But I don't yeah. think they're RPGs in a traditional sense. I think they're more like like almost narrative games. Like it's yeah. just a you just kind of play through a story that's like combat to combat, and then you make choices or or, or do actions based on your success or failure in the combat and the choices you make that shapes the narrative, and it, you just kind of play through the story. Okay. I don't think there's like towns and stuff you go to, and I don't think there's like a ton of character management either. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I literally just think it's like a story that you play through with combat. Yeah. Um, but I could be wrong on that. But from what I understand, having read reviews and stuff, it's it's just a neat series, and it has a really pretty hand drawn two um, D aesthetic. Yeah, it's it's got a it's um sort of very gothic feel to it, isn't there? There's a, a bit a bit of Castlevania in there, and if you I was just gonna well. say, if you squint really hard at this poster for this new announcement, it looks like Mitru Yamane's early art. Yeah, from like the old Castlevania stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'll probably pick that up. Like I say, I haven't played the first ones yet, but uh, I will get around to them at some point, as with so many Yeah, other for things. sure. <laughs> cool. All right. Um, talking of NIS, uh, Nipponichi recently announced a rhythm action platformer called Mad Rat Dead. Uh, this looks super cool. So, Aesthetically, uh, I am so in love with this game. It is ridiculous. It's just like, it's so refreshing when something comes out of uh japan that doesn't have a traditional anime aesthetic it's mm-hmm. got like a, a very like a like a punk aesthetic to it yeah yeah it's got a combination it, of sort of like sort of punky almost graffiti style character designs and then some more sort of i guess they're kind of hand-painted type backgrounds they kind of remind me a little bit of lapis labyrinth in a few ways yeah yeah, yeah. that's fair um but yeah, the, the 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 game is basically the the main character is uh, a rat who has died, um, and he gets the the chance to like relive his last day or something like that, and 
he has to do that by doing things in time with his heartbeat so you sort of you're playing a platform game but you're doing it rhythmically so it's a really interesting concept and there's some super cool character design and uh yeah the rat god is kind of adorable as well yes <laughs> yes no doubt yeah, yeah I'm so, all I'm all about this. Mm -hmm. um, I'm terrible at rhythm games, but just just for what this looks like, <laughs> I'm I'm so in. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, that is actually up for pre-order now from NAS uh, Europe, certainly probably America as well. But yeah, they're doing one of their sort of affordable limited editions for it as well. So that's probably going to be the main way you get hold of that is uh, a nice box copy of it. All right, I'm down. Yeah, uh, next thing we've got is that uh, we talked a little bit about the new Metal Slug games that were on the way a while back. Uh, the first one of those has been revealed. This is Metal Slug Code J, which is uh, the mobile game, um, which is a 3D Metal Slug game for mobile devices. Um, Ooh, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. I, I said that too, but watch that footage. Okay. This... But this, this I was like 3D Metal Slug. No, no, thank you. It, like, but they've really done an interesting job of kind of recreating the painterly style of Metal oh, Slug wow, with the 3D they have, graphics. They? It's yeah. quite pretty. It's I'm just... quite. I mean, obviously, nothing will capture the true heart of Metal Slug like pixel art will. But this is really respectfully done. Mm. Yeah, I'm just looking I mean, at the footage now. That's surprisingly true to the original. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's still a mobile touchscreen game, so yeah. it can it can it can take a dump and die. Like, I don't <laughs> care. But like, but aesthetically, I was really happy with how it looked. Yeah, no, that's that looks surprisingly cool. I mean, I can I can imagine it being a complete nightmare to control because I can already yeah. see in this footage that there's like a virtual joypad and abilities yeah. with cooldowns and stuff. So whether or not it's going to be any fun to play or not remains to be seen. But it certainly it certainly looks nice. But, you know, um, as we talked about a couple weeks ago, when they made this announcement, they're making two games simultaneously. Yes. Yeah. Uh, a, a proper console game and this mobile game. So seeing this, I actually was like, I kind of hope they use this engine for the proper console game. I want to see this yeah. style this style on my TV in HD because I yeah. think it's really cool looking. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's plausible because, I mean, if they're, they're sort of working on this and putting a bunch of effort into that, I mean, there's... Yeah, they may well they may well do that for the console version, but they haven't revealed any information about that as yet. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. I mean, you all you all know me. I'm a, I'm as as hardcore a Neo Geo purist as you can find. So, <laughs> uh, uh, but I really like the look of this from an aesthetic standpoint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I also think these these new like they're not really new character designs but just this fresh character art of the classic characters yeah. really has done a great job of recreating the kind of distorted um uh kind of abstract character designs of the original just kind yeah. of these weird caricature kind of noses and chins like they've done a really good job of like updating it with a modern digital art feel mm -hmm. what, but keeping that character very much uh, in place yeah yeah well you have to wait and see Okay, um, so that's most of the major news that we, we made a list of. Um, I also just highlighted a, a couple of things that I, I sort of spotted on the websites for a couple of the digital events that we had recently that I just wanted to highlight that look quite interesting. Um, so on uh, the New Game Plus Expo, um, a, a game that looks like it could potentially be quite cool, uh, it's called Idol Manager, uh, which is called a business sim a dark comedy set in the Japanese idol industry that's currently in development for PC, Mac, and Linux. Um, and this, rather than because a lot of strat a lot of things that get called strategy games these days tend to actually end up being clickers. Um, uh -huh. but, it, but this looks like a proper strategy game. It's like there's lots of stats, there's lots of buttons to click on and icons and that sort of thing. And it's got a really nice sort of uh, pixel art aesthetic going on with it as well. Um, so yeah, this this looks potentially interesting, and the the idol industry in in Japan is is one that I don't think has really been explored that much in certainly not in Western releases. Obviously, there's been games like the Idol Master series on uh, Xbox and various other platforms, but yeah, sort but of often 
not when it is explored, it's not really explored in a way that's like a critical perspective. It's yeah. more like fan, like fanboy celebration stuff. Like, yeah, I wouldn't ex- like. There's a great quote here on this website, right? Their crowding personal achievements can be your greatest commercial ex- success, but their emotional meltdowns and PR nightmares can spell financial <laughs> disaster for your company. So, like, I, I imagine this is probably going to take a more critical and realistic look. At yeah, kind of well, they, they, some they, of the they, downsides of this business. Yeah. I mean, they specifically refer to it as a dark comedy, so there's, yeah, there's probably going to be some sort of satire in there as well. So, but yeah, I just thought. I just thought this looked really interesting because I, I really like the art style of it and the because it's got like a, a nice combination of anime style art and then these really nice looking pixel art characters and buildings on the kind of strategic screens. So I thought that looked potentially interesting. Um, I don't think there's a, a date on that at the minute, but like I say, it's in development at the moment and there's a, a reasonably comprehensive website uh, that tells us a bit about it now. Uh, other things we've already talked about the Neo Geo Pocket Color stuff. Um, Neptunia Virtual Stars uh, has been confirmed for Western release, which I'm very happy about. Um, yeah. So this is the game that was known as VVV Junior in Japan, um, and this is the one that incorporates a bunch of um, real life virtual YouTubers as well. And so there's... yeah, there were a couple I think I've seen before. I don't think I know their names though. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm just going to say, I'm not super well up on the world of, of virtual YouTubers, but I, I know there's, there's some that I've I've sort of seen around and I thought, oh, they, they would fit right into Neptunia, and I think they're they're in there. <laughs> so. it, was, it was easy to keep track of them when there was like, when it was like brand new and there was like three of them. Yeah, no, they're but a now, huge industry now, huge industry. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, so this this is basically sort of the next evolution of the action Neptunia formula, from what I can tell. Um, oh, so really? I thought this was like a, like a regular Neptunia game. They describe it as a hack and slash game on the on the website. Um, I, I that's interesting. It... Uh, so Idea Factory and Compile Heart are developing this themselves. They're not bringing in Tamsoft this time. Yeah. I think this is intended to be a follow-up to Four Goddesses Online. Oh, that would make sense. Yeah, yeah. That would make sense. Because... That was kind of in a weird situation because, like, like narratively and in terms of character development, that was very much a sequel to Mega Dimension Neptunia, um, but sort of going off in a different angle gameplay-wise. So, but yeah, this this looks cool. Lovely character designs, lovely new costumes for all of the uh, all of the major characters, and uh, yeah, it's confirmed for Western release. So, I think you can find out a bit more information about that now on uh, Idea Factory's website. Uh, along with that as well, Death End Request 2 also confirmed for Western release. Lots more information on that now. Um, so the the gist of this one appears to be sort of, rather than the difference between the real and the virtual world, this seems to be sort of the, the difference between day and night. Um, so during the daytime, you're going around, you're investigating things and that sort of thing. And at nighttime, um, this stuff called shadow matter appears um, that is... Uh, bad news <laughs> um and, and so you need to fight that off and, and 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 do sort of things like that um combat wise it appears the the knockback system is back which is great because that was so much fun in the first one um they haven't mentioned anything about like the genre shift thing that the first one did but that would kind of make sense because if this one isn't focusing so much on sort of the the digital realm the divide between the real and the virtual then uh, that would make quite so much sense in terms of um of narrative and setting um but there are still elements like the like glitch mode and the field bugs and that sort of thing so they may well still have something like that in there but haven't incorporated it yet so if you're not familiar with death and request this um genre shift mode was it was basically some of the characters special moves you could um temporarily turn the battle system into a third person shooter a fighting game uh, a billiards game a puzzle game and a 3d platformer and it was just different ways of doing lots of damage and certain enemies were more susceptible to to different ones of these special attacks and it was a, a real sort of distinguishing feature of that of that first game definitely one of my favorite games that idea factory's done um other stuff uh there were also some things came out of the indie event called uh, gorilla collective which was sort of ran alongside the the pc gamer event i think uh, first one that looked quite interesting is a game called Boyfriend Dungeon. Um, this oh yeah, I think that one's in, been in development for quite some time now. 
yeah um i haven't heard of it before but yeah that that that, that makes sense but uh, this is a game basically where you um you can romance your weapons <laughs> yeah so so each each of each of your weapons is uh, like personified as as a person so as, as well as like exploring the dungeons and doing hack and slash action rpg combat um all of your weapons are uh, also people that you can chat to and uh date presumably and i guess that is probably how you how you power them up and so on but uh yeah i don't know if this is going to be any good or not but the, just the concept of this uh, sounded really really fun so I'll probably the action looks pretty good and smooth. Mm. Like it doesn't it doesn't look like garbage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, that just sort of caught my eye a bit. Um one that I've seen a few people talking about recently is a game called Haven. Um this looks really neat. This is um it's an RPG based around a couple who escaped to uh sort of a, a, a deserted planet. Um, they're being chased by something or, or, or something along those lines. But the, the the sort of interesting twist is that the, the the two main characters they're they're in a relationship with each other. So there's a very strong focus on them doing stuff together, both in terms of narrative and mechanically. So if you look at the gameplay, there's a lot of things that are teaming up and like holding hands and doing things and flying around this. Sort oh of... my gosh, holding hands, Pete! You know yeah. I can't show that. I know it's disgraceful, isn't it? But uh, yeah, they're holding hands. <laughs> um, yeah, so so I, I've seen a, f- a few people talking about this recently and making excited noises about it. So I watched the trailer and it yeah it, look, it looks cool. It's got a yeah it's um it's by the same people who did uh, furry. You know that uh, that uh, really cool oh yeah action game yeah oh it was like that was like a boss rush yes. game yeah, yeah oh man that was so furry. much fun to play yeah oh that, that's cool yeah lo- looking at it now there's kind of some sort of aesthetic similarity certainly and it, in terms of the the sort of color scheme that they're using is quite furry esque. Um, there's a touch of the sort of um, No Man's Sky aesthetic about these these open worlds that they're exploring as well. Just the sort of angular mm-hmm. nature of the landscape and the the colours that you use. The heavy emphasis on like sort of turquoises and purples and that sort of thing. It's just got a really distinctive look to it, and I think I think that could potentially be very interesting if the if the trailer is anything to go by. Uh, what else have we got? Um, there's an intriguing looking puzzle platformer called Evans Remains um which is um this could potentially be like a pretentious indie nonsense um because it's all about like a missing boy and people crying and that sort of thing but it's got a really nice sort of pixel art style to it and some lovely animation and special effects like reflections in the water and so on um and uh yeah it looks like some some fairly interesting puzzles along the way as well i got kind of vaguely um celeste vibes from some of the the platforming gameplay that they show in the trailer for this as well so yeah, I can see fair. that. Yeah, so mighty switch force also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so that looks quite cool. cool. Again, that, that that just caught my eye a bit. Um, and then the final one um, that I just wanted to mention uh, was a game called Vigil: The Longest Night, uh, which is a, a sort of uh, it's a Castlevania inspired game, but there's also quite a lot of uh, Dark Souls and Bloodborne in the aesthetic as well. Like if you look at oh, the, yeah. if oh, you look at the screenshots there. on the on the Steam page, sort of things like the interface and stuff looks very Dark Souls, and then you've got this big slobbering broodmother monster that looks like something out of Bloodborne, and yeah, just the the aesthetic of this was really eye catching, and it looks like it could be a, a, a really cool um, open structure two D platform game with lots of gore and exploring, and yeah, so that looked uh, that looked kind of cool. Yeah, this is from another indie who also came out with uh, Never End. Yes, yes, another indie. Also in a uh, kind of a Dark Souls-ish vein. Yes, yes, that's... uh, I need to check in on that again uh, recently, because I I last played it ages and ages ago, and I know they've added a lot to it since I last played it, so I should should really get it. Oh yeah, you were quite fond of that game. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I mean, I'm not normally, like, super huge on um, sort of Souls-like combat, but the, the sort of the few twists that this game added with like the random generation and the exploration and the way that equipment works and stuff was was really interesting so yeah i'll have to and the, have to, and the pretty anime girls and the pretty anime girls and the the valkyrie character with the enormous thigh muscles um <laughs> but yes anyway so that is everything that i wanted to highlight is there anything else that you guys want to bring up uh, that you've spotted recently ah yes that's it for me it's, but it has sure been a deluge mm. lately Joe, yeah, anything from you? A... Oh, not for me. No, cool. I think uh, I think we've covered all our bases here. Good stuff. 
mean, there's been a lot of Western stuff, too, but who wants to talk about that? <laughs> I mean, I do, but maybe this isn't the place for that. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, if there's anything that's interesting, please. Yeah, go um, ahead. No, I, I don't actually have anything, so... Okay. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I'm, I'm looking forward to Cyberpunk. You know, I am. Oh, for sure. Well, I mean... Those guys are incredible. Yeah. Also, I, th- I think Studio Trigger is doing a Cyberpunk spinoff anime miniseries. Yeah, ooh, that sounds really um, cool. Which I'm all boned up for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, that game's clearly going to be amazing. I just don't care right now because I'm not going to buy it until five years after it comes out when there's a complete edition. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, although although bearing in mind CD Projekt Red's history, they all of the additional stuff will likely be free. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so we'll see. That that certainly looks like a cool game. Uh, some recent stuff come out with Baldur's Gate three as well. That's looking quite nice as well. Larian Studios. Yeah, that working looks on that. really good. So yeah, the uh, Larian Studios are the guys who did the Divinity series, which was very very well regarded by uh, by fans of sort of classic style Western RPGs as well. So yeah, Larian's not to be trifled with. Mm. All right. Um, um, if that is everything, then let's hold that there for today. And I think we've done a, a good job of covering all the things that was uh, particularly interesting to us as well. So uh, you'll notice we haven't mentioned the PlayStation Five at all. <laughs> Yeah, I thought you might want to leave that for another time because that's a whole other discussion all by itself. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. has there has there been much since the last discussion we had about it? Like, un- unless there's any new stuff that's been announced, not really. No. The, the no. only news the only news I've seen since we talked about it on the last episode was they've released official screenshots of what it looks like on its side. Oh, <laughs> good. And I still think it looks stupid. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway. All right, let's wrap that up there for then today. Then, so um, both of you, would you like to tell us where to find you online? Let's hear your pitch first, Chris. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, you can always find my artwork on MrGilderPixels.com. I'm also fairly active on Instagram, uh, also at MrGilderPixels, uh, where I post kind of work in progress shots. Nice. So uh, please give me a follow. Good stuff. And Joe, do you want to tell people where they can find you streaming and when? Yes, um, so you can find me at twitch.tv slash TV. I'm usually on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday from 7 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, I'm also trying to do a little bit more with YouTube, so if you want to follow YouTube, uh, my channel there is just called Airy Channel. There's no TV at the end, but... um, I'm uploading an ep- a Let's Play of another Four Job Fiesta run because I'm addicted to Final Fantasy V. So, <laughs> if that's your thing, come on in. I'm welcoming you with open arms. Good stuff. And as always, you can find my stuff on MarioGamer.net for written content and YouTube at YouTube.com slash Pete Davison. So, currently running on there. We've got the Final Fantasy Marathon. We're into Final Fantasy III now. Um... We've also got the short play series on Wednesdays, which is just quick looks at a variety of stuff from whenever I feel like covering. Um, And, of course, the Atari A to Z series on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays as well, covering Atari 8-bit, Atari ST, and uh, the games in the Atari Flashback Classics collection. So, just remains for us to say, as always, thank you very much for watching and or listening, and we'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please help out the channel by leaving a like or a comment and subscribing. Be sure to check out moegamer.net for new articles on Japanese and Japanese-inspired video games new and old every weekday. Every month, Moegamer features an in-depth exploration of an individual game or series as its cover game, so be sure to check the archives to see if your favourite has had a deep dive yet. If you'd like to support the site directly, please consider becoming a patron or buying me a coffee. You can find links to do both down in the video description. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.